tape at some point in the future. Start and join. <laughs> Plus tax. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ch checks in the mail. Two eight zero. Write it down. Two eight zero. Two two eight seven. One eight hundred six zero six four two six three. Memorize it. Pound six thirty on a Sprint PCS phone. There will be a test at the end of the day. Those are the numbers to call and contact, or you can email Leland L E L A N D at W L A P dot com. It is the Pulse of Lexington, and our next guest is Darius Shafa from the Lexington Herald Leader, who uh, broke the story. Well, let's just uh, let me just go through this real quick before I introduce Darius. Um, this was posted on the uh, Red, Ar Red Anarchist Action Network website. Uh, this was on May 25th, right the day after uh, that the, uh, the the Ron group had uh, gone downtown and disabled the coin-operated parking meters. Uh, it says, friends, early this morning, warriors of the Red and Anarchist Action Network used an industrial bonding agent to sabotage and disable over 150 coin-operated parking meters in downtown Lexington, Kentucky. That we have, this is where it gets good, that we have provided an unexpected dose of free parking to this city is not to say that we are in favor of car culture, which turns our environment into a dangerous and unfriendly space by removing us from it, or that we want to, pe to uh, have people have an easier time commuting to their awful jobs, though we do earnestly hope that our actions have brightened someone's Friday. No, we are always looking towards the world where we both, uh, where both coins and commuting are irrelevant. We wished only to demonstrate how easily and instantaneously the militants and ingenuity of those who struggle can alter the same oppressive situations we take for granted day after day. And it says in all caps, for social equality through social unrest, up the nihilistic attack on the social order. So uh, there it is, folks. 150 coin-operated parking meters. Darius, how did you break this story? Well, actually, I have uh, through my email. I get uh, any uh, any news that comes to uh, with the keywords Lexington, Kentucky, or the University of Kentucky goes straight to my email. And so, when this was posted on uh, an alternative news website, um, I believe it's called Infoshop.com. Uh, it came to my email, and I looked at it, and I wanted to make sure at first that it was it wasn't a hoax that they had actually done this. And so, I started making some calls. Uh, to uh, Bill O'Mara, Director of Revenue. They're the folks who run the parking meters for the city. And uh, sure enough, they had, he had heard of some parking meters being looted. Now, some would argue that yourself reporting on this and myself now making this an issue on our show would give legitimacy to a group like this uh, that, would, that would commit such an act. Do you agree with that? Do you think that it's, it's better that we cover these, these uh, items and keep them out in the public and hopefully hold some folks accountable? Well, the fact that they committed a crime that could have had a great impact on the taxpayer made it newsworthy in and of itself. Uh, the potential was there. Um, Bill O'Mara told me that had, uh, had the damage been more significant to the meters, it could have cost about $190 each to replace the mechanism inside. Uh, but uh, what he told me was that the revenue folks were able to repair them. So 150 meters for about $200 each, that's $30,000 of taxpayers' money down the drain. Uh, we found out that they weren't that badly damaged and so far that's not the cost that's going to come out of the tax so, pocket. But, so they were able to repair them all and without, like you said, a significant cost uh, incurred. But even still, it's an inconvenience. Uh, uh, when they mentioned that they were able to provide free parking, how did they handle that uh, downtown? Were, were people able to actually park without without paying or did the uh, city block those parking spaces off till they got everything fixed? I'm not sure about that. Uh, as far as uh, what I had learned from Bill O'Meara, they still haven't even found uh, all of the meters that have been damaged. Uh, the count I had uh, the day before yesterday was uh, a little over 30. And so uh, as they go, they're, they're finding the meters and they're replacing them. Uh, I did see some, some meters that had been blocked off, but I'm not sure if that was what it was for. Now, as, as a, a story here, when, when you covered this, I know you, you tried very hard to get a hold of this anarchist group, but were unsuccessful in uh, raising any of them to give you a call back, right? Uh, yeah, there's uh, by Googling this group, you can find some of their newsletters online. Some of the newsletters have a mailing address here locally. I thought it was a, a home or an apartment, and I was going to go knock on the door, but it turned <laughs> out to just be a mailbox, et cetera, uh, mailbox drop. Uh, they also had an email address online, and uh, I, I dropped them a couple emails, but uh, no response from them. What would you, let, let me ask you about that confrontation. Had, had, you, had this been an apartment? 
tell me how that would have gone as a reporter. How would you have approached someone uh, if they, you know, had had an apartment and they had answered the door? Well, it comes down to being fair. Um, we can't just let the city talk about what's going on from their side. We have to offer the folks who, who did this a chance to talk. That, that's part of being a good journalist. I would have offered them a chance to talk about it if they'd like, and if they don't want to talk, that's their, that's their choice. Uh, 